Tail analyst Tony Chapman. Thanks for coming in, Tony. Thanks for having me. I'm escaping the malls, and it's nice to be here in this quiet sanctuary. Do people go to malls anymore? I mean, it's like almost 2020. We've got a lot of online shoppers out there. Yeah. So how I mean, is it different this we're, year? We're seeing a. We're seeing this as the tipping point. This will yeah. absolutely be the year where online is going to surpass conventional retail. It's kind of a sad day because it's a lot of our economy and our energy and our excitement is attached to stores. But w no, without question, my phone's become a vending machine. Yeah. And having that parcel landing on my my door is something that consumers are embracing. It's the tipping point, but how much do we see the split being shared between brick and mortar and then your phone and, and online shopping? Well, we're going to see. I think it's going to be a, a significant difference this year. Every year there's been momentum, but what we're seeing is a decline in conventional sales. And every 1% every really hurts stores because they're already thinly margin and a lot more retail but the other thing I'm seeing is this, this whole subscription economy is I, I, mm. I don't have it I don't own I'm like this used to be about buying CDs and videos and video games all this stuff comes through the cloud now and I'm subscribing to my content so that's changing the question is am I gonna get gift cards and that and so that's a big difference is that that we're no longer we're accessing stuff versus owning it and the experience economy is a lot of people going I actually want to go out and do stuff and post in my Instagram how interesting my life is versus yeah. get stuff that really doesn't allow me to do that. That is the weird thing too about this year because I mean there's online shopping we're getting more acquainted with that some people did their entire list that way right. and then there's others where you're scrolling Instagram and you're like oh like that there's a link to that on that page you follow that or it's the cloud and you're buying music yeah. that you don't own but you can have access that's, to. That's the danger because they're fly fishing in right to what you like. Well this is a fashionista she likes to look good she loves accessories next thing you know that's in your Instagram page and that's what data does. Data lets you go it's not this big drift net trying to get everybody to buy 50 percent off they just put something right in front of you you go wow that is for me. And that's where you start worrying about your impulse shopping because that, these guys are becoming masters of seduction. And I mean, is there a big gift this year? For instance, like everyone's got AirPods. Yeah. But do you, do you find there's been a big theme or a big major gift that retailers are pushing online Te and otherwise? Technology is certainly playing a lot, and, and we're seeing a lot, you know, the smart tech speakers, and everybody's just trying to make their life easier. So faster, better, cheaper, which is all to do with technology. But the other one that's really interesting to me is since Lotto Max has gone twice a week, how much money is coming out of our economy and just going right to us? We pay taxes on it, then after tax, we give it back to the government. And I'm seeing so much promotion for lottery everywhere. And it's like a lot of max, $60 million. Has a, well, what a great stocking stuffer. So I'm wondering really the consequences of all those dollars. It should be going to prime the pump and adver other advertisers for the station. And people going in and buying is actually just going to hope. And that is hope because there's like the odds of that is like one in 40 million. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, they're pretty good for the government, though. It's good for the government because they, you pay taxes and then they take your after tax and take it back. Right. So, I mean, it's brilliant. I can understand why they're promoting that much, but ult ultimately, how much is that impacting where we really need to prime our economy? So, those are the three things I'd be looking at. Online's taking over from retail, subscription and streaming and buying from the cloud, which I don't even, it just comes to me every month, recurring revenue. And the third thing is that sort of experience economy laddering into, oh boy, if I had 60 million, think of the experiences I'd have for that. So all of that coming together, a changing season. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about this final push for shopping. Four days of shopping days left before Christmas. This has to be good for malls because you cannot order anything fast enough to get here by this point. So at what point does it transition to being, you know, all hands on deck in, in retail? It is a make it or break it. But what happens is they start panicking because they've got all this inventory. So you start seeing the Boxing Day sales happening now. So the traffic that could have come in and bought those, those boots at a full price or 20% off, now 50% off. So you're getting a lot of volume. You're sort of getting rid of a lot of inventory you don't want to be stuck with in the, you know, January 1st. But at the same time, it's hurting. So panic is setting in, not just for the shopper, but for the retailer. Good deals to be had. Takes a lot of conviction to go into that mall right now. Look at that. Those I are some know. brave people. I think that's, is that Yorkdale? Yeah, it's, yeah, that's it's, a full it's, parking lot. You know, lot. part of it is that sense of being with people. But it is, it is an incredible time to avoid. I love shopping up and down these streets because that's still where magic can happen. Yeah. Um, I do want to ask you quickly about Boxing Day. Yeah. Will this still be, you know, walking into stores or will this be clicking from your bedroom? <laughs> well, it's changed because Boxing Day was the big day where I was armed with gift cards. It used to be cash and parents, and people said, well, that's pretty impersonal. I'll give you a gift card because I kind of know you like whatever. Yeah. And those gift cards are moving to experiences, so a lot of Cineplex cards and restaurant cards. But the second thing is the big Boxing Day sales are actually being pulled back to begin with sort of that cyber, cyber Monday and Black Friday phenomena. So the big deals were already happening. So Boxing Day is being stretched back into 
the sort of the American Thanksgiving right. as a snapshot because it's good for retailers. If I can get you buying back then, chances are you'll buy more by Christmas. So Boxing Day is nowhere near the event, and even then, a lot of people will be doing their hunting and shopping and treasure hunting online versus going out there and, and uh, burying the bride. Again, something that we should be thinking about because retail is so important for us. Yeah.